If you're a person that does any form of furniture flipping, have you ever gotten so many pieces of furniture all at once that you get really overwhelmed by everything that you got that you push off doing the flips for months on end only to get really sick of all of the random furniture laying around your house so you just wanna get rid of everything you got and give up on the flipping altogether? <laughs> because same. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. This week I am doing a little furniture flipping. I have had three, no four. I think four pieces and then I have one piece listed and done already. So I have had five pieces of furniture laying around my house and I'm getting really sick of looking at them. So I figured it is time to roll up my sleeves revamp them, get them listed, and hopefully get them out of my house sooner rather than later. And a lot of times when I furniture flip for a profit on my channel, I turn it into some kind of challenge and I cram as many flips into one video as possible. But a few months back, I started a proper furniture flipping series here on my channel. And I said in that video that I was gonna focus on one piece at a time. So although I have three pieces to flip, I'm gonna be focusing on some nightstands in this video and honestly these nightstands are really unique I think that's the best way I can describe them and I have had a super hard time figuring out what the heck to do with them so with all of that being said let's dive in and let's transform these nightstands here they are my unique nightstands I originally was not planning on turning this nightstand flip into a video. I was just gonna do them for fun on the side. So three months ago when I got them, my husband helped me out by sanding them down. And when he was sanding them down, that's when we started to notice the differences. At first glance, you would think that these are the exact same nightstands, but they are not. There are some differences. <laughs> the first difference is this bottom detail piece. They are slightly different shapes. One of them, I think it's this one, it just slopes down more than this one does. The second difference is this little leaf detail. This one, it bubbles out, and then this one is completely flat, and that has nothing to do with the sanding we did. It was always like that. And then there are some other differences with this top drawer. The edges right here kind of curve in, and then these ones are completely flat. So these top drawers just have a completely different look. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> And then the fourth and final difference is the sides right here are made out of different materials. This side, no matter how much we tried, the color didn't change, it didn't sand down at all. And then this side did sand down. So Jordan and I tossed around a few theories as to why we have the same but different nightstands. We think they came from the same manufacturer just a few years apart. And at one point these nightstands did have their perfect match, but they were lost and at some point somebody found these and put them together as a set thinking they were the same because that would explain the slight differences. And before anybody asks, these are the same height, width, and depth. So there's no change in the dimensions. So once we notice the differences, that's kind of what's halted this flip because I've just been wondering what I could do so that I can keep them a set. So my plan for today is to change what is different, make them the same so that tomorrow I can get to priming and painting. So um, let's get to work. <laughs> So the one thing about furniture flipping for a profit is that you have to be strategic about what you're putting into the piece, or I guess a better way to phrase that is how much money you're putting into a piece. So the first thing that makes these nightstands different is this curved detail at the bottom. So I am going to start off by drawing basically a straight line and then using my jigsaw to cut this curve out to make it a nice like straight bottom and get rid of that curve. If it doesn't look good, we'll go back to the drawing board. That's not bad. I'm gonna have to sand that down, but not bad. Okay, first one down. Let's do the second one. A 
Okay, I do have to cut the first one again because they are still slightly different. How do I get this curve to be exactly the same? I wonder if <laughs> this is gonna be stupid, but let's see if it works. Okay, this is unique, but I think it's gonna work. I have this nightstand clearly laying on this nightstand so that I can trace the curve that I need to cut on this base. Yeah, I think that worked. <laughs> let's get this cut out. Okay, so now that I have the bases cut, they are exactly the same, but I think I cracked the code on why I have the same but different nightstands. I think this one was made later because it's out of cheaper materials. So we've got slightly cheaper material over here because this didn't sand down nicely. And then this base was definitely made out of cheaper material than the other nightstand. So I think this came from the same manufacturer a little bit later and they cheapened the materials to make more money. I am a detective. Yay. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. <laughs> okay guys, so the next step in making these similar but different nightstands look the same is working on these top drawers. My original plan was to do something to cover up this middle panel section, but that's when I realized that even these side panels right here are different. Yay. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to remove these and then I'll come up with something to create a new drawer front. Let's try this first. That worked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nails. I'm hoping I can get them out and uh, then we can go from there. So I have the panels removed, I have the nails removed. I just went and got a one by eight. And my plan is to cut this one by eight down to the same length as the bottom drawers. And then I'm gonna get it attached to this top drawer. I think this is gonna be the best and cheapest way for me to have a cohesive look on all of the drawers for both nightstands. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so I just went ahead and I measured everything out so I know exactly where this drawer needs to sit on this drawer front. Got it all marked out, so I'm gonna use wood glue and my nail gun to get it all attached. New drawer front complete. Guys, I have matching drawers. Yay. I also have matching nightstands. They match. They are the same. Yay. And they're gonna look even better once it's all painted and cohesive and looking nice. So I have these half round dowels left over from my previous furniture flip. So I figured I should take them and use them to trim out the drawers and do a nice little frame. Thought it might look nice and uh, just dress up these drawer fronts a little bit. Um, I've got some miter clippers. I've got my nail gun and I've got wood glue and I'm hoping I can just sit here and use my miter clippers. If I have to get out my miter saw, it's fine, but I just wanna sit here. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> that wasn't terrible. Ow, that did kind of hurt. Yay, done. Good morning, guys. <laughs> I have had a slight change of plans. Yeah, very slight change of plans. So my plan was to wake up and, uh, you know, get started sanding the corners and priming and painting these nightstands. But I had to run and grab some paint brushes. And while I was at the store, I found these pack of dowels. And this pack was only a dollar twelve, and it got me thinking that I could create a fluted look on the front of these nightstands. The last time I did a fluted look for a furniture flip, it really paid off. The dresser I did it on sold really quickly, but I ended up not profiting that much money because I had spent so much on the trim to create the fluted look. So if I can create a fluted look but not spend that much money, I'll profit more. <laughs> 
Yeah, furniture flipping math. I'm gonna try this out. If I don't like it, I'm gonna scrap it and just return the dowels. But I think, I think this is gonna look good. That did take a little bit longer than I was anticipating, but I think it's gonna be worth it. And I was able to do this fluted look for about $15. So I think it is gonna pay off. But because it took longer than I anticipated, I don't have time to prime and paint because I have to let the primer sit. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime these nightstands and then I'll get to painting tomorrow. It is time to finish up these nightstands. I'm hoping I fully finish them today. And just a little bit ago, I went ahead and did the best thing I possibly could have done to make these nightstands look really nice and really polished. So yesterday when I was cutting all of the dowels to do this fluting, not all of my cuts were exactly the same. <laughs> Actually, like none of them were. So when I was gluing them down, there was like a slight bit of waviness in the fluting and it didn't bother me until I went ahead and primed these nightstands and then you could really see the waviness. It was very subtle, but you could still see it and it was really annoying me. So just a little bit ago, I took some caulk and I put the tiniest, tiniest bit of caulk in that edge between the fluting and this outside trim. And I did it on all four sides. And oh my goodness, that really cleaned up the look of these drawers. So I've been letting the caulk sit for a little bit. It's all dry and now I can get to painting. And guess what color I'm going with? If you guessed black, you're wrong. <laughs> If you're new to my channel, I paint a lot of things black, like a lot of things black, but black is not a color, it's a shade. So I wouldn't have said, guess what color I'm going with. And I was tempted to go with black, but I'm gonna be going with Gloucester Sage by Benjamin Moore. This is like a greenish gray color. I have this paint left over from a previous project. A lot of times when I'm furniture flipping, I just use paint that I have laying around. And the last time I painted a dresser green for a furniture flip, it actually sold for more money than I had it listed. So I'm hoping this green really sells these nightstands. So I'm gonna get to painting. I'm probably gonna have to do two, maybe three coats on these nightstands. Um, but I'm really excited. And if for some reason I don't like this green, we'll go back to the drawing board. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and test out a little bit on these drawer fronts. Typically I test out color on the side, but really the fluting and the drawer fronts are what you're gonna see the most of. So I wanna see if I like this color on the drawer fronts. Yeah, that's really pretty. And I've worked with this color before in my mom's bathroom makeover, so I also know it dries a lot darker. So yeah, this is gonna look really pretty. My original plan for these nightstands drastically changed after I noticed all the differences, but the biggest change was the fact that I painted them. My original plan was to sand them down and refinish them, but since the side of the one nightstand didn't sand down, I decided the best and quickest way to make them look and feel cohesive was to just go ahead and paint them. After finishing the first coat of paint, I got to work staining the top of the nightstands. I first tested out the stain on each nightstand because I just wasn't sure if the stain was gonna look the same on each nightstand because with these almost matching nightstands, nothing was gonna surprise me. But luckily, 
They did match, and I first used Honey by Minwax. It's just some stain I have laying around from previous projects, but I ended up not liking the red undertones. That was just like not the vibe I was going for, and the red undertones didn't match the cool undertone that the paint has. So I did a tan wash over the stain to take down that red undertone and to also minimize the very loud wood grain that the top had. Once I let that tan wash sit, for a little bit, I went back over the top with that same honey stain, and that really created the perfect dark, weathered, cool tone stain I was going for. Good morning, guys! So I wanted to let the stain and this paint dry overnight before I went ahead and did top coat, and I am loving the way the top of these nightstands turned out. That was the first time I've ever done stain, tan wash, and then stain again, but I've seen other furniture flippers do that to take out any undertones. And so, yeah, that worked perfectly. Love, love, love the top of these. So now it is time to officially finish these nightstands. I'm gonna do top coat. Once that top coat dries, I'm gonna add hardware and that will complete this nightstand furniture flip. When I got to hardware, I tried using some leftover hardware I had from either a previous furniture flip or a previous project from around my house. After playing around with the different options and placement of the hardware, I went with some leftover handles I have from my husband's office built-in project. And that is it guys, from mismatched to being a perfect match. What I thought was going to be a super easy little flip really turned into quite the ordeal. But hey, that's what you get from furniture flipping and buying secondhand furniture off of Facebook. Overall, I am super happy with how these nightstands turned out. Mainly, I just love that they actually match now, but I also love the fluting and the color I went with. They look clean, they look polished, polished, and hopefully they sell soon. I will keep you guys updated on when they sell, how much they sell for, and what I profit from this flip. I hope you guys liked this furniture flip and video. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!